organization. I am very excited and honored really to be part of Star Bloom. I'm so excited to be with you all here on YouTube. My name is Clara and I am connecting from Chile, South America. Today my talk is about crystals. It is entitled The Life of a Crystal. And I want you to come with me on a trip across space time to tell you a story, the story of Dr. Ray Brown. Back in the 70s, Dr. Brown was diving with a group of people around the Bahamas in the Caribbean. In one moment, he decided to wander around by himself. And he said he ended up finding a pyramid underwater. The walls of this structure were very smooth, highly polished, he said. And so when he noticed an opening, he took the chance and went inside the pyramid. And there he saw some sort of golden rod hanging from the top with a red crystal on the tip. And when he looked under, he discovered a metallic sculptor with two hands forming a U shape like this, holding inside a clear crystal ball. Dr. Brown confessed he tried to remove the crystal, the red crystal, but it was impossible for him. So he decided to go for the crystal ball instead and took it. And during the years I've been learning about crystals, I stumbled across a video of Dr. Brown showing this amazing crystal ball, baptized the ball of Atlantis. He was actually measuring the energetic field around it. So it was pretty evident that it had some sort of field around itself. And after Dr. Brown made his transition, the ball became the main attraction during an exhibition that was held in the memory of the famous clairvoyant Edgar Cayce back in 2010. Some channel communication regarding this ball revealed that it is actually an Arcturian technology left on Earth from those times where we had several ET civilizations assisting the development of planet Earth when crystals were used in different areas of everyday life, for example, electricity, transportation, by location, because crystals were considered an ultra advanced technology. It seems that this ball was a sort of software and the channel information said the ball was able to store information like a hard drive, but also that it was used as an antenna for interdimensional connection. And people that have interacted with this ball also said it can unlock your abilities to access other timelines and realities. With this story, my intention is for you to expand your consciousness when thinking what a crystal is and what a crystal can do. Because I am pretty sure that by now, we understand they are much more than simple stones. Nikola Tesla, the Serbian born scientist, believed crystals are living beings. He said that maybe we cannot understand what the life of a crystal is, but that doesn't mean that they are not alive. From a technical point of view, a crystal is a form of matter, as we all know, it is a solid material with atoms that are organized in arrangements that are regular and symmetrical in three dimensions, and crystals are all about order. The word crystal comes from the Greek, crustalus, and Mother Nature is the one that creates crystals. Now, we all come from the stars, including crystals. Some scientists even say that in essence, our planet is a crystal because it vibrates like a crystal. It has a field around itself like a crystal. And just for you to know, the field around planet Earth has the attributes of a crystal uh, formation. A bunch of other materials are like crystals, but they are not completely made of ordered formations such as ice, some metals and ceramics, for example. If we search on Google, 
we will see that silicon dioxide is commonly found in nature in the form of pores. And silicon dioxide, also known as silica, is made of one atom of silicon and two of oxygen. And that is an interesting fact to mention because pores and water not only have oxygen in common, both are also in similar geometries, tetrahedral and hexagonal, for example, and according to studies, they both resonate with the energy of the mind in very similar ways. We have several investigations done by the Japanese, Dr. Masaru Moto, who was mentioned earlier. He's specialized in alternative medicine and also by the scientist, Dr. Marcel Vogel. And I am going to address later in this talk in particular, the extraordinary research done by Dr. Vogel about crystals. Another important subject is that in nature, there are seven main crystallographic geometries and they can be found, all of them, in the formation of water. This aspect shows that water can act as a matrix or several patterns in nature. And when water is structured, when you treat your water, for example, to change the structure of it, modifying tap water to return it to the natural state, for example, you will find that water changes and becomes a liquid crystal because it begins to show again structure and order. It's very important fact, and as we all know, we humans are in average 60% water. And Dr. Vogel found that the influence of a crystal in humans can be enormous. And one of the reasons is precisely the similarity between the structure of crystals and water. Before diving deeper into the investigations of Dr. Vogel, let me tell you a little bit about him. Marcel Vogel was an American scientist. He was born in 1917, and he made his transitions in the 90s. And Dr. Vogel not only worked for 27 years for IBM computers, but also he is the name behind the development of the LCD screen that we all use right now, for example, on our computers, mobiles, TVs, etc. He dedicated a lot of energy to the story of crystal quartz. So, and during an interview he gave during the 70s, he told the story of a priest in Canada who handed himself a crystal quartz to examine, telling him that it had some sort of energetic properties. So Dr. Vogel took the crystal in his hand and he felt a vibration and he spoke about a kind of pulsation precisely. He inhaled deeply, and when he exhaled, he said he pointed the crystal towards his assistant and something unexpected happened. His assistant tilted the head back and entered in an altered state of consciousness. And Dr. Vogel said this episode left a profound impression on his mind. And later, he discovered that crystal quartz not only help humans in the amplification of emotions and thoughts, but also he stated that they have the capacity of altering consciousness. Remember the ball of Atlantis? It's the same conclusion. Dr. Vogel spent years of his life teaching his findings not only to the medical personnel, but also to several healer and holistic practitioners. And in fact, he designed and cut crystals in a specific way, looking to optimize the flow of the universal energy or prana to the crystal and from the crystal because crystals are both receivers and transmitters of energy. The crystals that Dr. Vogel designed and cut are not only rare, but extremely powerful. This started when Dr. Vogel had a dream where he saw the shape of the tree of life and he related this vision with a crystal of four sides and two points. And that is how he created his first cut, mainly for healing purposes. Then he discovered that some crystals in nature have six sides and Dr. Vogel found that this specific number of sides will amplify the energy. So he created the astonishing Vogel crystal with six sides and two points, 
The female point has an angle of 52 degrees resembling the pyramid of Giza and the input of the universal energy. And then you have the male point has the output with an angle of 60 degrees, but Dr. Vogel also created double terminated crystals with eight, 12, and 13 sides. And other crystals he developed were intended for meditation with just one point and a flat base like obelisk. The male point of the Vogel crystal is a structure that resembles a laser tip. And Dr. Vogel spent five years designing this first cut because he wanted to synchronize the crystal with the frequency of water. And consequently, with the layer of liquid crystal around our own cells. And he managed to synchronize the crystal with the frequency of water. In all his interviews, he mentioned that the membrane around our cells is in fact a liquid crystal. But listen to this, Dr. Vogel said that if the crystal doesn't have a specific cut, the frequency is not the same. And crystals, water, and the outer layer of our own cells are all sensitive to electric field and the energy of our own thoughts. And Dr. Vogel stated that the structure of water can even change according to our thoughts. This is super important because until his final days, he repeated that the future of medicine is going to be a mixture of crystals and flowers essences. So he was always looking for a way to unify science and metaphysics. And after Dr. Vogel made his transition, another marvelous thing happened. One of his disciples named Ray Pinto developed a special cut after he had a dream with Dr. Vogel. And in that dream, Dr. Vogel showed him a new design, the dream crystal. And a dream crystal is considered an evolved version of the original designs by Dr. Vogel. This shape, which I have right now in my hands, is so unique. It's having several concave facets and the energy coming out of the male point forms a double helix shape resembling the human DNA. I have always believed that Dr. Vogel channeled these cuts because they are so advanced and I even remember listening to a talk where he said that you can only use them with absolute unconditional love and pure intention, looking always for the benefit of your own self and others. Otherwise, the crystal will break as it has its own intelligence. Dr. Vogel established that when he holds the crystal in our hand, we can transfer information to the crystal, and then that information can be processed by another person just by holding the crystal or even being next to it. And a few weeks ago, I posted on Instagram the story of a medium that decided to give away a crystal to someone as a personal gift. But what happened is that this person placed the crystal on a night stand, and that night, very unusual dreams happened with visions of divine beings and other realities. And the next day, first thing they spoke over the phone about it. And guess what? The medium confessed that the crystal was used to access other dimensions. So Dr. Vogel was always recording and measuring his conclusions due to his scientific background, of course. And he also verified that structured water, when in contact with the crystal pores, receives information. In other words, we can imprint a program with our minds using the crystal as a storage device, like a USB, and then download that information into water. And the crystal receives the information just with the proper intention. That's why he didn't believe in cleaning them or burying them in salt or leaving them under the moonlight. He said that you just have to inhale, exhale, and transfer your intention to the crystal. If the intention is just about cleansing, then so be it. And the most remarkable thing about Dr. Vogel is that he said that love is what heals. The intention you transfer to the crystal 
full of unconditional love is what heals. The crystal, as a living being, flows in the service of others. And that, I think, is so beautiful. And throughout history, many ancient cultures around the world have used crystal for different purposes, from healing to divination to funeral rituals or simple ornaments. We're speaking about Egyptians, Greeks, Mayans, Aztecs, Incans, and of course, Native Americans and from Australia. Crystals have a wide variety of applications in our everyday lives. This is precisely because they have electromagnetic properties, which are remarkable. In some cases, they are, they are pyroelectric, which is a property that certain materials have when they face changes in temperature, leading to an electrical charge. And they can also be piezoelectric, which is a phenomenon that occurs when certain crystals that under mechanical stress, they acquire an electrical polarization. It is very rare in nature to find a material that is both pyro and piezoelectric. It only occurs with the crystal quartz besides our own bones and tendons because we humans and animals have this crystalline structure inside. In simple words, what I am trying to explain is that certain crystals generate electricity when heated or cooled or when they are under pressure. That is why, for example, crystals are so useful in so many different areas of our lives. For example, you can find them in computer chips, satellites, on our TV screens, medical equipment, headphones, sonars, lasers, etc. They are vital when any technology requires energy transfers. And pipes of electricity what was discovered in the 1800s when two brothers were able to show that a certain crystal, for example, crystal quartz and tourmaline, were pressed, you can verify an electric current inside of them. They found that each crystal becomes a small battery with a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other. And under pressure, both polarities connect and they create a circuit inside the crystal. The Curry brothers, that was the name, they also discovered that if they receive electricity from an external source, crystals, they vibrate inside, from side to side. This is because when you send electricity to a piezoelectric crystal, the atoms inside, they move. Let's say they rebalance, but the shape of the crystals modify, and that is so awesome to understand. And the consequences of these discoveries were monumental because the crystals jumped for clocks and watches, and they can stabilize and flow the energy, allowing for the clock and the watch to have the regular marking time. And they can continue helping humanity with the invention, for example, of the radio, which in the beginning was called the crystal radio. But it, it is in the last decades that the crystals have exploded. They are in our cars, alarms, in our sensors of airbags, for example. They are in use in the medical area, for example, in ultrasound equipment and heart monitors. In the military industry, you can have crystals, for example, in hydrophones or in the bullets that they change the curse. And by no means, of course, this list is complete. The idea is for you to realize that the use of crystals is extremely extensive. And if we think about it even deeper, the words data and energy are related to information. And in 1994, scientists from Stanford University were the first to use a crystal to store an entire short film which is the same technology used today in our mobile phones. More recently, 360 terabytes of data were stored in a crystal the size of a coin. That is almost the entire history of humanity. Those with the ability to see energy know that crystals emanate an energy field that is visible, which has also been identified by electrophotography. And the field of crystals interact with everything on the planet. Animals, 
people, plants in a very positive way. And I would like to point out a very special crystal, the ARC, which is a crystal that has a signature of another scientist, Nassim Harney, a physicist. The ARC is defined as a high precision quartz, and each piece is treated so the crystal can have a specific fre frequency inside. And the crystal is designed to stimulate piezoelectric uh, electricity in the axis of the crystal. And the crystal is also surrounded by a titanium structure which contains a system of magnets that rotate. And the arc is a, such an astonishing technology because it's not, it's not only capable of structuring drinking water, as we spoke before, when water is structured, it has the ability to hold information and the energy increases, but also the arc creates a toroidal field of energy. So the arc can be used in a similar way to acupuncture, for example, to treat uh, the meridian network and the chakra system. And I find very remarkable that the fact sheet of this crystal specifically states that we all experience energy in a different way because some of us can feel the crystal field and others cannot feel anything. This is because the person's sensitivity to the energy and resonance, and this is related to our physical or emotional state. So we must remember we are all different, but when we work with crystals, we have to make sure we are relaxed and without any distraction nearby. And by the information we have discussed so far, you can already know that most crystals are solids, but also we have the fantastic liquid crystal, which are crystals that were discovered in the 1800s. And liquid crystals can be found in nature, for example, in the wall of our cells that I have mentioned before. And also we have liquid crystal in spider webs and also in some beetles because the shell of the beetle, the insect, is made of liquid crystal. And another example is the material used in the bulletproof vest, which also is made of liquid crystal. And the LCD, of course, screen is made of liquid crystal. And I think there is still an enormous potential for liquid crystal that is still unexplored. And many people believe crystals have consciousness. And like all living beings in this universe, they have a mind of their own. And when you work with them, if you take care of them, if you treat them with respect, you will see they improve their performance. And as we have spoken during this conference, they can be great partners during the healing process, but also they can communicate with us. They can give certain information to us, certain knowledge, because they are storage devices. They have the knowledge of the planet via cash because they were born inside Mother Earth, and they remain there for thousands of years. They contain the information that a human being can download. And they can also be used as an antenna, as portals for all, all of us to access or receive information from other realms. And crystals are attracted to certain people, and they, I do believe that they can communicate with us using telepathy. I am sure that if you go inside a certain crystal shop, you have felt that some crystal is calling you. And if you dive into the properties of that crystal, you will certainly find out why you are feeling this attraction towards this crystal. And if that is not enough, let me tell you that there are countless stories of people that they have lost crystals and they have mysteriously appeared months and even years later. So before I finish, I want you to know that all crystals respond to the energy of the environment. They react to external vibrations. As we learned today in understanding that the cells of our bodies vibrate at different frequencies, our organs, they have their own vibration too, reflecting our health, our well-being. We can imagine what happens when we interact with crystals as they have a vibration too. And crystals have the capability to detect your vibration. If there is any misalignment in yourself, the mathematical order of a crystal, they have the potential to transform your distortion and bring your body, yourself into 
balance and harmony because that is precisely the foundation of crystal healing. They are control towers, as I said before, they collect signals and channel them. And that is why a qualified therapist, for example, a person that has done the inner work and is in contact with higher self can heal using crystals because the person can serve as a channel for the energy coming from higher realms with the intention, of course. And the other important thing to mention is that different forms of matter and light vibrate at different frequencies. Therefore, crystals also vibrate at different frequencies depending on their size, their thickness, their color, etc. And that is why not all crystals, for example, citrines, vibrate at the same frequency, at the same number, because they are all different. Finally, let me introduce you to my Lemurian crystal. I have so much love and respect and gratitude for this being. A Lemurian crystal is a master crystal. And a master crystal are specific crystalline forms that, that can be used to align ourselves to the divine love and divine light. And master crystals are very powerful tools. They can be used to enlighten yourself they are specially programmed because they have their own knowledge. And the Lemurian crystal is a crystal for light workers because they have the divine light in themselves. And if you are drawn to the divine light, you will be drawn to this crystal. They contain wisdom. They are constantly updated because they work with you according to your own progress. And we can recognize a Lemurian crystal because they have a random pattern of sides. And in these sides, they have like horizontal lines, like uh, for example, a barcode. In Lemuria, we all know, follow the principles of the law of one. Lemuria was a civilization of peace, of unity among all beings on the planet and unconditional love, total harmonious community. Lemuria had the supervision of extraterrestrial civilizations, specifically the Pleiadians, who brought very advanced technology to birth, including crystals. And later, this and other galactic civilizations provided free access to energy through crystal pyramids, which generated electricity. And the pyramids also served as places for healing the body, mind, and spirit complex. Lemuria, master crystal, were used to store information, like a hard disk. And I am speaking about the Akash of that time. And this information was supposed to remain in silence until a certain time on the planet, where a group of beings will look for the crystals and access the data required for human transformation and the quantum jump. And we are speaking about the transition to the fourth density, and that time is now. So this is the purpose of the crystal. The crystals are here to help us and we are on the way to become our best version if we use them on a daily basis. So thank you very much for listening to this talk, for your interest in crystals, for your love to crystals, and thank you for being here, of course, on planet Earth at this moment. You are very loved and you are all supported and you know you have the support you need, you just need to ask. So have a good evening, much love and much light. Thank you so much.